I am I am feeling myself right now that uh <laughs> that that I got you on because when I when when I came when I came across the the hashtag I think it was truckers life or truckers lifestyle or something like that and I I I came across uh came across your your Instagram page yeah I was like wow and then when I went to go and read the article I I I can honestly say that you are the female version of the American badass right now. <laughs> oh, thank you. God damn it, man. All right, so you ready to do this? Ready to get into it? Sure. All right, let's do this right quick. What's up, y'all? Lockout men in the truck on the 30 for another podcast interview for you guys today. And today... Today, I was tracking her down. I seen her article that I just mentioned about it. I said, yo, I, I got to talk to her. I, I got to talk to this, uh, this, this young lady right here. Not only, not only she's part of the tattoo community, but she's a truck driver. Yes. Yes, she is a badass truck driver. <laughs> I would like everybody to put their hands together and welcome Alice in Truckerland. Thank you. What is going on, young lady? Oh, you know, just driving and uh I'm actually taking a a relief load. Oh, okay. So you, so, so you're not, so you, you don't have to, you, you don't have to follow the hours of service now, being that you got a relief load for this. Don't, don't say the word because YouTube is on some, some dumb stuff with that. <laughs> but, uh, you, you're no, on. No, I, I'm, I'm following my hours of service. It's not too pressing. So. Oh, okay. 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 But uh, this, this, how, how, how are you managing out here with, with, with this outbreak and, and stuff? How, how, how are you managing? I'm doing everything like I used to do before. The only thing that's harder is trying to find food out here and water. I mean, everybody is literally taking everything off the shelves. So everywhere that truckers can actually park, there is nothing in the store. Yeah. You have to usually outsource to people on Facebook or Instagram and be like, hey, is anybody in this area? Are you able to bring me somewhere or bring me something? And there's so many amazing people out there willing to help. This, Phenomenal. This this is the time. I, I, I just said this this is the time to start mending fits, fences with 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 people that you probably had problems with in the past. I mean, you know, this this is the time to to start uh you know, making making changes. You know, and Facebook groups. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of Facebook groups had a lot of beefs in it. This ain't the time to have no beef no more, because that person that you probably had beef with is probably that person that you're gonna need. You know, absolutely. You say you reached out. You say you reached out to the uh, to the trucker community through Facebook and Instagram, and and they they came through for you. Yeah, you bet they did. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. There, at least there is some of us that's out here that still believes in the brotherhood of trucking. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of like businesses even and police departments willing to help out. So that's quite amazing too. I mean, it's it's cool that it's it's cool now that you know that they start to and it it's unfortunate that it it, it takes. This fear, this pandemic to to yeah. for people to start showing, I mean, start showing us some respect out here, you know? Right. It is crazy. Well, introduce yourself to my listeners right quick. Let them know who you are. Well, I'm Allison Truckland, otherwise known as Christy. Mm -hmm. Um I have been in the industry. This is my 18th year of driving, and I've been over the road the last about eight years. Okay. Eight, so, 18 years? 18 years. Wow. So, so 
Tell me, old school. Tell what what is the what is the difference between what what have you experienced from then up until now? What what was all the changes that you have seen in the industry up until now? I know within the last ten years, it seemed like that brotherhood has gone away, mm-hmm. and it's it's unfortunate that kind of went away. There's everyone's got their camera phones out and they're, you know, they want to videotape you. They want to bash you and whatever it is on Facebook or Instagram just to get their likes and their fame. And it's, it's kind of sad. And there's, you know, the training isn't there for like the new, the new people that come out. I'm, I'm also a trainer Mm -hmm. and I like to give my students the best training that they can receive. So when they go out there, they're not making those mistakes that all these other ones are making. And it's, you know, and then you have the ELD thing that came into play and everyone's rush, rush, rush everywhere. And it's, it's not like it used to be. It's, it's not as fun as it used to be. You say it's not as fun as it used to be. How, how was, the, uh, how, how did the money change between then and now? Well, you don't get as many miles in a day anymore, which, Granted, yeah, you have to run legal, but I don't know. It, you know, and the freight has it's plummeted. So there's, there's, in my opinion, we're oversaturated with drivers, and the freight has just dropped dramatically. And everyone, you know, these big mega companies come in here and they swoop all that stuff out because they're going to do it for dirt cheap, which then leaves the owner operators with nothing, and they're not going to pay their wages. Exactly. Exactly. Art, now, being that you have uh, been in the business for 18 years and over the road for the last 10, are are you company now or are you owner-operator or have you been owner-operator? What, what, what was your experience? I went back to being a company driver. I was an owner-op, and when the ELDs came into play, it literally, when the freight dropped and everything, I lost my butt. And I couldn't afford to stay and stay up and going, so I just jumped on with the company, and I've been happy ever since. So wow. I don't have to worry about the overhead and you know my truck breaking down. They take care of all that stuff for me. And what do you what do you say to new what do you say to new drivers that's that's coming into the game now that's that's over here talking about the only way to make money is to be a lease operator or, or try to hurry up and be an owner operator. What, what, what do you got to say to them? I say get your experience and being a company driver, learning the ropes before you just, I know there's a lot of people that just jump into it because they think there's all this money there. So that money is not going to be there unless you know what you're doing. And a lot of these that come in here, you go to CDL school, they don't teach you a darn thing in there. They only they te- don't teach you like the business management of anything that you're going to have to pay for like your repairs and your fuel. And, you know, you got to figure out how you're brokeraging your loads. And nobody tells you any of that in school. They, I mean, even when I get students brought to me to train, mm-hmm. they have not even a clue what's even going on. I keep, I keep telling it, it, it scares me. I keep telling people to take that, to take your, the, the, I keep telling people to take your left hand, raise down that window, and with your right hand, throw everything that you learned about uh, trucking in school out the window. I keep telling That's people exactly that. Exactly what I tell them too. I keep telling I keep telling people that because when they get out here, they're gonna be like, "Oh, this, that, and that third. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Mm-hmm. Try, try getting at it. Try getting at a truck stop at night and try to find a parking spot. And the only way to get in that, mm-hmm. the only way to get in that bad boy is you got a blind side in. Try, try right. that. Try that. Mm-hmm. So, so trainer, huh? So, are are you a trainer currently, or or you you train? You know, you train then. Um, I'll have. I mean, I'll take on students like every once in a while. I don't take them on very often because they're very stressful. <laughs> I agree. But I mean, I've had some nightmare students, and thankfully, I've also had some very wonderful students. Well, but, what what was your what what was the what was the worst student that you had? What what was your experience with with was it a female or a male? 
I only train females. Oh, okay. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, and um, this one particularly came out of CDL school, and um, she thought she knew everything. But yet, when I, I like to quiz my students, you know, while they're driving, I'll ask them questions that you would see, like, either on your CDL test, when you go take your CDL exam, or just common knowledge things that, you know, one should probably know out here. Mm-hmm. And she literally yelled at me and said, well, why do I need to know any of this? I already got my class A. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to help you and advance you so that you have the knowledge when you're by yourself. And she clearly didn't even want to take any information because she knew absolutely everything. So you being you being a trainer, I'm sure you kind of put the kibosh on everything and and brought her happy uh-huh. behind and brought her happy happy behind back to the uh, to the terminal and say, "Yo, you gotta go." You bet. <laughs> you bet. What was your? Uh, what was? She lasted your... a whole five days. Five, you said a whole five days, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, let me let me give you a bomb drop for that five days right there. <laughs> you said you said a whole five days. What about um? What was your what was your best experience with uh with a trainee? Um, you know, obvious when once they're out of my truck because I usually keep them about two hundred and fifty hours. Mm-hmm. And if I don't feel they're ready to go on their own, I'll keep them longer than that. But I've it's, it's not, I mean, the best thing that's come out of it is when they get on their own and they call me and they're like, oh my gosh, if it wasn't for you, you know, just the information I've given them or helped them and kind of the positivity they give back to me and, you know, it makes me feel good. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. And you say you only, uh, you only train females, right? Have you, have you yeah. now, I, I don't know if, if you, you don't have a YouTube page or anything like that, but do you follow, uh, any truck drivers on YouTube? Um, I actually do. I follow, um, like Allie Knight and, um, happiness by the mile and, I can't think of any of the other ones right now offhand, but yeah, I have a bunch of them that I follow. Okay, okay. My camera just went out. Hold on for a second. Give me a second. Okay, we're back. Technical difficulties, okay. everybody. <laughs> Had the camera just <laughs> just just went out right quick, and I had to turn around and. Started back up. I don't know why. Look, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Technology. Though. You know, right? You know, right? All right. So, um, <laughs> where, where, where were we? On the, where were we? Uh, oh, oh, Allie Knight. You, you said you was following Allie Knight. Any, anybody else? Have you, have you? Um, okay. So you, you, you familiar with YouTube? Are, are you, are you familiar? Yep. Are, were you familiar with any of the controversy that went on? On YouTube with uh, with a trainer and trainee, or did you hear anything about that? Which one? Oh, God damn it, man! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there was uh, there was an incident over at Prime uh, where a trainer was training a female uh, trainee. And, yeah, I heard about that. Like, there's he, that that yeah, there was a bunch of big articles about that. Yeah, he uh, he uh, lost his contract. With uh, with Prime, uh, what do you what do you say about about trainers and trainees, male and female trainees? What 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 do you say about what do you say about that? You know, it, ain't it more about being focused on the job than trying to trying to be focused on a relationship? It should be. You're there to do a job. You're there to train them. You're not there for your company to hook you up with somebody exactly. i don't know what in their mind that they thought that was okay even i mean as a female if i had a male trainer i would i would pray that they wouldn't be even trying something like that and but they do though i mean it's 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 rampant like that you know what i'm saying there you got some good trainers and then you got some bad trainers and then you got some trainers that yeah that thinks what they're 
downstairs instead of thinking what they're yeah. upstairs. So 18 years in the business, man. Yeah. So how how did you start? I mean, how how did you start? Did you go to school? Did did you was you grandfathered in? How how did you how did, I <laughs> I was grandfathered in, but I um, actually, back then, I didn't even know there was CDL school. I didn't know anything like that. My family owns a gravel company, so I kind of started out doing that. I drove school bus, and I drove transit buses, and then I, you know, worked on the gravel, you know, hauling gravel and doing asphalt work, and I just did that my most of my life, and hauled hopper bottoms for farmers on the side, and then I went to do live haul turkeys, and... Yeah, here I am. <laughs> so, okay, so, 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 meant you you mentioned that you was grandfathered in. So, back then, it wasn't called a CDL. I I I know it was like called like many different. Uh, it was called a lot of different uh, things back then. It wasn't like how it is now. CDL A, CDL B, uh, CDL C. What was it called when you got grandfathered in? Was it a chauffeur's license or? Yeah, it started off as, like, a chauffeur's license. I mean, when I first started, I just had my Class B. Mm -hmm. And then I, when I did get my Class A when I turned 21, it, then I had to retake everything. And then it was all that other added stuff. But, yeah, back in the day, you only had to take, like, your a pickup truck with a fifth wheel and go take your test. Wow. That's, wait, that was a pick. A four F one fifty or a three fifty, <laughs> and a fifth wheel, and that was it. That was it. No, no pre trip, no, no, none of that. Just no. the, just the road no. test. Just just the road test and the backing up, and boom, you're done. Yeah. Wow, man. But like I said, when I turned twenty one, then I had to go actually all the other stuff so oh, oh okay okay so but you was confident because you was doing all that prior to even yeah. getting so you so you as a you as a trainee at that time you didn't come with the with the with the cockiness you 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 came with the like i want to learn and i need to learn yeah exactly and pretty much my dad just threw me the keys and goes okay just get from here to here safely okay Okay, so your whole so so everybody in your family are you are you from a family of truckers or just you know just your father? Uh, my dad was, um, my half brother is, and then I have yeah I got a bunch of family members that are, but I'm the only female. Okay, and they all kind of looked at me, thought I was crazy when I went over the road. So. The um, the American badass. That's that's what I'm gonna call. Yeah. You. <laughs> Just want it more in life. <laughs> oh man, oh man. So from so from 21 years old all the way up. How how did you how how did you manage how, how did you manage through uh throughout throughout the years? How how did you you know how did you keep sane from being you know being alone? How did you manage your finances? to where you are yeah, now. I I've, I've I've always loved being alone. So I, I guess it never really bothered me. Okay. I was always just by myself. I mean, I I went to college a few times just to see if I wanted to do something else in my life, but then I thought I trucking I would just go right back to it. It was just something I love to do and I like I like being out here by myself, just listening to my podcast and the radio and you know, how do you how do you keep yourself safe out here? Um Well, I do I I mean I took self defense classes, which doesn't always mean that's gonna protect you. But mm -hmm. I mean my dad just this last year he goes, Hey, I got you something and he got me the really cool taser. And it's a flashlight, but it's also like one of those big mag lights. Mm -hmm. So I mean it's got some weight to it. So if somebody did come up to you you can either hit them with that or it has, right. you know, the taser on it. And I mean, I, I can't carry. So right. I, I go to a lot of states where I can't carry to. So. But you are, con you are conscious of your surroundings and everything as far oh, as when you, uh, when you, when you post up at night. Right. Oh, absolutely. 
All right. How Especially did... nowadays, you you definitely have to because there's so many trailer break-ins and people mm. breaking into trucks and. Exactly. Exactly. Is is is, and with this pandemic that's going on, it's kind of you know putting a lot of fear in the into everybody right now. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely time to make sure that you you taken care of. Yeah, you just can't really live in the fear. You just gotta just almost fake it until you make it with that fear. Just uh, get out there, and you know it, it's kind of like animals. You know, if you're if an animal knows that you fear it, it's not gonna trust you. Exactly. Exactly. So. So, At least if you wear your head high and you're good. So, how how was it the first time when you got behind the wheel of a eighteen wheeler? How, how how did you how how did that make you feel? Ain't gonna mm-hmm. lie, I felt like a self empowerment moment. <laughs> <laughs> you say you felt I'm like this is pretty cool. <laughs> you say you felt strong now. You you part of the you part yeah. of the you part of the good old boy team now. <laughs> yeah, the big leagues. I made it. There Woo! you go. That's what's up. Do you think that? Do you think the professionality of the truck driver diminished over the years? Oh my gosh! Yes, it's unfortunate. You go to some of these truck stops, and I'm just wondering what these people are wearing. I've seen, I've seen the men or women, whatever they're wearing, like leggings and like sweatpants and pajama pants and flip flops. I don't know what it was. Flip flops and. Some women are wearing hoodie pajamas. What is up with that? I don't know if you saw this, but these people are going out. I'm like, um, you're going to shippers and receivers and stuff like that. You should look presentable and look like you're walking into a business for an interview at least. I mean, come on. I hear you. I hear you. It's it's crazy. My my thing is flip flops. Flip flops and dri- yeah. and and drivers with their feet up on the dashboard driving. That's that's yeah. crazy. That is that is crazy in itself, right there, man. The lazy truck driver, right wow. there. Wow, dude. So 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 Alice, man. So you so you you rocking a manual right now, or are you driving an automatic? But I'm. Um, I I well, I've driven everything, um, but. This truck that I have right now is an automatic, and I hate it. I really hate it. You have no control over anything, and it is, it's aggravating, but companies now are all going to automatics because every student that's coming out of CDL school basically has a restriction. So Exactly. Exactly. What's the... Uh... It, you, can't, you can't control any of the stuff. Like, you can't teach them how to downshift or... I don't know. Like, it's... I, I I absolutely hate it. So <laughs> I hear you. What's the uh? What's what's the? How do you feel? Well, eighteen years in the game. I I am I am stoked. I I, oh, I am stoked. I am stoked. Eighteen years in the game, man. And you came from the old school way of trucking. What? How yeah. how do you feel about how do you feel about being a female in a male dominated industry? You know, honestly, I feel like I'm part of them. Like, it's a, to me, it, it shouldn't matter what race or sex or anything that is when you're in the industry. I'm not here. Com- I mean, I'm not here competing with anybody. We're all doing the same job. And so it's, it's never bothered me, but I know there's a lot of other females that feel like they have to prove a point or something. And to me, it's just it's what I love to do. All right, all right. The only person I'm proving every day is myself. Exactly. You don't have to. You don't have to show and prove nothing to none of these male drivers out here. Just the fact that you exactly. are the driver and you can handle yourself. You know, I talk to. Uh, I talk to many female drivers, and I am still stoked to this very day that you guys can come out and actually do the things that we can do. I I've recently talked to mm-hmm. a. I recently talked to a 50 year old uh, flatbedder. She's out here flat bedding at the age of fifty, and That's I'm, cool. I am so stoked about that. I was, like, I'm impressed. Yeah, I, I was like, I was just too wild on that. What's the, uh, what do you think the hardest thing women's women face in the industry? 
<laughs> you know, I I don't even know because I've been in it for so long that I just I, I mean the new age women versus my grouping is way different. I mean, for me back in the day, it was just accept being accepted into the male dominant industry, whereas now they're accepted in, except for they're looking for like equal rights and all this other stuff. I'm like, we all are equal. We're all doing the same thing. And they, they'll they usually come after me after that, too, because they don't like what I have to say about it. <laughs> I just tell them to buck up Buttercup and deal with it. You know what? You, you know what? That's that's what they got. That's that's what they got to do. You know, they 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 yeah. they they don't want they don't want to hear they don't want to hear it because they think they know so much. You know, and it's it's crazy. It's crazy that uh, it's crazy that that people that people tend to think that um, uh, that yeah, I, I know more than you. I don't have to listen to what you have to say or whatever, whatever. But realize, I got eighteen years out here. You just now coming. Yeah. So you just now coming. It's like. You you scratching your head on these new jacks like really though? <sighs> Crazy. And they, they use it as like an empowerment thing of I am woman, hear me roar and think that everybody's supposed to bow down to them and treat them differently and uh, it's not really the way it goes. It is not. So Alice May, I uh I, I found your I, I found your article here. In Ink Magazine, the Miss yep. Chris, Miss Christy M. right here. Uh, how how did you become part of the tattoo community, man? Look at that sleeve right there. I'm <laughs> look at that sleeve right there. How how did you uh, become a part of the uh, tattoo community? What what when did you start getting tattoos? Um, I got my first one when I was eighteen. And the sleeve is just something I started probably like four years ago or so. I just wanted a way to express, like, all my tattoos obviously have a story. But my sleeve is literally my trucking life. Oh, wait. I see some cards right there. Can I can I zoom in on that? I don't think I can zoom in on that. But I see some cards right there. You a poker player? Or you just like how the cards, how the cards lay on your arm? Um, well, the cards spell out love. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there it is. L-O-V-E. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, you got the seven, the zero, the eight. Yeah. So, so your tattoos, do, do, I'm, I'm sure they have meaning. So, do, what are some of the meaning of, of your tattoos? Well, the sleeve is the Alice in Truckerland. It's her magical, wonderful adventure that she is. Alice is actually the name of my truck. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is Alice's world, and she's in Truckerland. And every, they always ask me what the story is behind it. And I said, well, breast cancer plays a huge role in my life. And I've had a couple lumpectomies done and dealt with the scares of breast cancer in my life. Mm -hmm. So... My truck is kind of like an incognito breast cancer truck. So you wouldn't know that it has, you wouldn't, like cancer sometimes you just don't know it until it happens. And so like when you're walking by my truck even, you don't realize it's a pink truck until you're right next to it. And it's got all this pink stuff everywhere. But you wouldn't know it until you're right there. So the whole Alice and Trucker Land thing, you know, she falls down the rabbit hole and she's in a mysterious world and she's got to figure out what she's got to do with her life and the wonderful eye-opening magical place. Okay. And there's always a bright side, so. Where did you, so where did the name come from, Alice in Trucker Land? <sighs> you know, Alice, Alice, Alice in Wonderland is actually one of my favorite movies. And I just like the storyline, but I like the more like the Tim Burton style Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. And everybody always compared me to Alice, so Alice is kind of stuck. 
So you're you're so this this ink article is a competition because it, it, you're you're yeah. a court, you're a quarter of ugh, you're a quarter finalist says you placed yep. first in your group and has moved into the quarter finalists. So it, it is it has is the voting postponed because of the epidemic or it, did it is it starting back up tomorrow? It starts back up on Sunday. They had their wild card round the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. So the ones that were in second place in the grouping, they had got cho- some of them got chosen to be in a wild card. So those will be brought into the grouping as well on Sunday. Okay, okay. Now, guys. So every week is like a new a new thing for voting. So Now, guys, unfortunately, I'm not sure if this will come up before the voting or after the voting. Uh, I'm not sure when it's going to get posted because the way I do my interviews, I got a lot of them. <laughs> and they post and they post it every Saturday. So you know, I might might help you out by posting it next Saturday. But how long? How long is till? How when? When is they going to tally everything up? When it? When? When is everything need to be tallied up by? Um, once the voting starts, it goes for seven days. I think it's like six or seven days, and then they do another round after that okay 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 yeah it, it this will probably yep. this will probably be afterwards but i am hoping i am hoping and praying that she's that that she'll win who uh how, how many people how, how many people is in the uh is in the running with you you know you know they don't even tell us oh man that's i have no idea i know there was like last year there was over like three hundred thousand contestants uh-huh. but i really don't know like i don't know if that's true or not so i just know there's a lot wow okay but well you got my vote as a matter of fact uh tomorrow when it does resume i am definitely going to go ahead and vote for you and uh and uh hoping that you win man thank you definitely hoping that you win i'm hoping so too because everyone's like cause I mean, the prize is to be on the cover of the magazine, which would be awesome. Okay. And then you get um, a little bit more exposure. Yep. And then there's a 25k cash prize. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah. I, I, I hit that bomb for you on that. I, Definitely get it. We want to get that. We we going to get that prize. I am going to be pushing one. That's what I want to get. I. <laughs> I want to build my dream truck. So everyone's like, you're not going to get very far with 25K. And I said, you know what? Any bit helps. I know that's right. I know that's right, man. Well, da- yeah. well damn it, man. 18 years in the game. Uh, tattoo enthusiast. When, when did you, how old was you when you got your first tattoo? 18. 18. And yeah. what, what made you, what made you get the tattoo? Was it was it like a um, like like a relationship that went wrong or a rela- a relationship <laughs> that went right you know, or actually I got it for my grandma. Oh, okay. My grandma and I we we share this bond. She actually passed away, Aww. and she was she died at the exact same time I was born. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and she loved butterflies, so I have a butterfly for her. All right, that's what's up. So I'm, yeah. I, I've seen, you know, I've, I've scrolled through the pictures while you, you know, while we was talking, but it looks like you now you you only have you only have just a few. You don't have it covering your entire body, right? I have a total of ten. You just can't see them. Oh, okay. Okay, some some on the legs. If I if I win the cover, then you'll you'll get to see them. Oh, uh, okay. I'm just not gonna show them all right away. Oh yeah, that's what's leave, up. Leave it to the imagination. That's what's up. That is what's up. All right. So Alice, man, um, Christy M, do you have any um, what advice? I know I know we talked about the new jacks and all like that, but what 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 other advice that that you would give? a male male and or female that's thinking about coming into this industry and uh coming out here to drive what what 
what's some what's some helpful advice from Alice in Trucker Land? Um, you know, every day is a privilege to be out here and just take it with a grain of salt. You don't know when your last day is going to be. Just be prepared for it. All right. All right. That is what's up. That is what's up. Well, Alice in Trucker Land, Christy M., thank you for showing up. I really do appreciate it. Um, this this pandemic, man, is uh is is scaring a lot of folks. Hold on, nope. Mm -hmm. It's scaring a lot of folks. Um, so definitely make sure you stay safe out here. Continue doing what you've been doing. I mean, I, I talked about the pandemic a lot, and it's not about what's going on now. It's about what's happening afterwards like are you going to absolutely are you going to continue you know like now you're washing your hands more and and now you're doing this more and that more are you going to continue doing that in in afterwards what do you got to say i still do it i'm i'm ocd about it so so what do you say what do you what do you say we we didn't see this coming i mean no. We we ain't we didn't see this type of we didn't see this coming. This this came like out of left field. The, 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 has this Absolutely. has this changed your 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 outlook on life any? No. I'm not I I, I don't like dwelling on things that you can't change. So if it's going to happen it's going to happen. If it's not it's not. I mean I'll just keep doing what I do best and hope for the best. All right, that's what's up. Well, Alice and Trucker Land, where, where can they find you on uh, social media? Um, you can find my Instagram at Alice and Trucker Land. Otherwise, um, I don't know. I have a Facebook, yeah, you, <laughs> but yeah, you don't you don't have to do you don't have to do your Facebook if you don't want to. But I am yeah. I am a follower now, Alice in Truckerland. So you guys definitely uh check her out. Make Thank sure you. make sure you guys check out the ink article as well. Uh you know, tattoo tattoo enthusiast, American badass trucker. She has some very, very, very nice pictures on uh on the ink uh on the ink website. Uh, I would, I, I, Thank you. I am not short of picking out which one to use for your bumper for this interview. So I definitely, uh, I definitely will find a couple of good ones and use it, use for the bumper on, uh, on our interview. But I thank you for coming on and, uh, chopping it up, chopping it up with me for a little bit. You know, we get to, we get to know a little bit about you, you know, the American, the American badass. You did touch on you did touch on cancer. Uh, you know, I lost mm -hmm. I lost my aunt to uh to cancer and I, I lost uh I lost a best friend to cancer as well. You said that you had a couple of scares. You talk can you, can you talk about that a little bit and how and how you're and how you out here fighting the fighting the good fight? Yeah, I I was pretty young and Usually when you're under the age of 40, they don't do mammograms. And I, being my grandma and stuff, had cancer scares. I just knew there was something wrong. And I went in and so now I actually have to go in every three months to get checked. Make sure that there's no more growth and stuff that they would have to remove. But um, I deal with, I used to do like a lot of volunteer work for uh, breast cancer research. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing with my truck because every so many miles that I put on I donate well I donate a penny per mile that I put on okay that is what's up that is what's up for this this is for the whole awareness or just breast cancer awareness yeah and it's I don't know it's near and dear to my heart so like anything that has to do with breast cancer or if I hear somebody with it I'm I'm immediately there for them well, you know what? I talked to uh who did I talk to recently? Um Brittany in Pink. That's a good interview too, so mm -hmm. definitely check that out. 
uh, she's uh, she's an ambassador for the company that she drives for, and they let her drive the yeah. uh, drive the uh, pink uh, pink breast cancer or rare truck. Yeah, that. Right. Yeah. Isn't that the pink the, the Mac? Yes. Yes. It's a Mac truck, it's like an Anthem. No, I, yeah. I think. Wait, I think it's a Mac. It might be a Cascadia though, but I'm not sure. But it's it's a beautiful truck though. So if you guys ever see it. You know, mm-hmm. y'all y'all know that is Brittany in pink, along with my girl Alice. Yeah, I know who she is too. And along with my girl Alice in Truckerland. So it been a, it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, if you guys, absolutely, if you guys want to come on the podcast and chop it up, just like Alice, Miss Christy M. Definitely hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or hit me up in the Instagram just like I did her. You know, we can find I, we can find each other in the Instagram and, and chop it up there. And then we'll come back and do it live on the air. Uh, Alice, thank you very much. You stay safe out there. Awesome. Thank you. And I appreciate you coming on. And for this, everybody, we are gone. Thank you, Christy. I really do appreciate you coming on. No, thank you. You're very welcome. That was fun.